what is up guys we are live from the car as you can see i'm strapped in here um i'm just getting off my shift i worked all night last night and then i'm at the meds conference today i'm doing how to dominate mmi but i want to take a second because man it's so interesting how the universe brings you things and there's been so much, so much greatness and so much terribleness in the last couple of days. So I wanted to get on here and talk to you guys for a second about some real, real stuff. And the question is quite simple, right? You see in the title of the video, what's up, Zach? What are you willing to give to get great? What are you willing to give to get great? Because I feel like people don't understand the balance of that equation and they're focused solely on instant gratification with no work required, with no give required to get. They are selfishly oriented when it comes to success. All they want to do is get the success, get the greatness, but they don't want to give up anything for that greatness. And we see it in the number of people that play the freaking lotto. And I even played a lot for the first time this week just to realize how ridiculous it was. But I played it. I was like, you know, let me buy a ticket. And I knew it was a scam when they made me pay cash for the lotto ticket. I'm like, oh, okay. Because the government doesn't want to have to have everyone tracking how much they spend every year on wasted money and lotto tickets. But it, it it's the perfect parallel for you guys. And I'm going to share with you guys a pre-med story. But before I do that, I want to set that up in the context of Tom Brady. TB12, right? Tom Brady as we are a week away from the Super Bowl. Tom Brady is great. And if you guys didn't know, he's doing a six-part documentary. And the first part of the documentary came out. And uh, <laughs> one of the things that he talked about was so profound. And I want to share it with you guys. And I want to encourage you guys to, to soak it in and stop thinking that it's not accurate, that it's not true, and that it's not the sanest thing you've ever heard. Okay? And here's what he said in the interview. They're asking him, what makes you great? And he said, well, what are you willing to do and give up to be the best you can be? If you're going to compete against me, you better be willing to give up your life because I'm giving up mine. Did everybody hear what I just said to you? What are you willing to do and give up to be the best you can be? If you're going to compete against me, you better be willing to give up your life because I'm giving up mine. Do you guys hear that? Does it make sense to you? Does it sound crazy? A lot of people don't like Tom Brady. Oh, Tom Brady's got that beautiful wife. They always win with the Patriots. Those cheaters, they're awful. And they say all this stuff about Tom Brady. They hate on him. And what I want to explain to you guys is a couple things. One, that's the line of all lines. And people get on me when I talk about this no excuses, just dominate and all this stuff because you guys aren't willing to give up what you need to give up to get great. You can't do it. Some of you guys, the people who get to medical school are willing to give it up. The people who get to the Super Bowl every single year are willing to give it up. Right? Tom Brady sleeps in seaweed pajamas, doesn't drink alcohol, doesn't party during the season, does all these things to get great. Giving up all that. And his wife's a model, so he could be in Paris Fashion Week, be in New York Fashion Week, be all these things, gives it all up to get great. How many of you guys can't be bothered, can't be bothered to go to a study review? Can't be bothered to go to the office hours. Can't be bothered to ask for help. How many of you guys can't make it to class because it's an inconvenient time? Oh, you know, my afternoons are really for staring up at the sky, so I can't go to class, so I'm not going to go. Oh, you know what? That, oh, man, that prep course, they said I got to put in 40 hours. Ooh, no, I was thinking more like 20. I'm not going to sign up for that. Oh, wait, I have to go every week? To be in this tutoring, that's a big commitment. I'm not going to do that. I'm not willing to give that up. How many of you guys are not willing to give up what is required to get great? And what's interesting is we have this phenomenon of the gunner in pre-med. 
the person who was willing to give up everything to get their medical school admission, to give their great, to get their greatness. And we call that person crazy and ridiculous and vicious. Here's the truth, guys. If you're a person who's willing to give up everything to get great, if you have that sickness, and it is indeed a sickness, an absolute sickness. I've been up all day since yesterday, up till today, and I'm going to a conference today to talk to you guys and teach you guys about the interview. That's a sickness to want to be up for 48 hours straight and delivering content. That's a sickness. Tom Brady is sick. He's sick. Gunners are sick. People get to medical school are sick, obsessive, compulsive people. Some of you guys don't have that sickness. And when you have that affliction, that sickness, right, that people look at as a negative, people will hate on you, will criticize you, will call you a gunner, will call you cold-hearted, will call you, right, oh, all you care about is getting to medical school. Well, you're dang right, all that's all I care about because I'm trying to get there. Because everybody's talking about, oh, I want to help my community, I want to do all sorts of things. You can't help your community if you flunk out of college. You can't help your family if you flunk out of college. You can't help yourself if you flunk out of college. Yet you criticize the person who's doing everything that's required to get into medical school and be their greatness. Think about that. How many of you guys, you you look at people and you envy them and you hate them for their greatness? Oh, it comes so easy. Oh, Oh, they're always working, always studying. Ugh, ugh. And you hate on them for their greatness. And I want to tell you guys, those of you who are willing to give it up and you have that sickness, you have to, as part of that sickness, you have to love to be hated. You have to love to be hated. That's what has to happen. When I do these videos, you guys should see some of the ridiculous hate emails I get from people who say that I'm harsh and I'm too focused about talking about being successful. Well, if we're not talking about being successful, what are we talking about? Oh, you guys want to be entertained? You want me to jump around and spit things that sound really nice to you guys and have fancy graphics and not give you real? Is that what you guys want? So you guys can fall off and fail and be average. I continue to repeat, we don't do average around here. We do highly successful domination around here. And if you're not with the program, you don't have the sickness. You can't hang with us. We got the plague over here. Either you want some of it or you don't want some of this. It's that bottom line. And I want to encourage you guys because I had a couple interactions. I'm going to tell you guys right now about these pre-meds this week that just kind of hit this whole spectrum of giving to get great. And the first one is a student who got into medical school, just got their acceptance, not to any medical school, but to their top choice medical school, Columbia in New York. I don't know why she wants to go to Columbia in New York. It's cold as heck out there when she could be out here and she got into the top programs out here in California. But that was her top choice. She wants to live in New York and go to Columbia. She has a best friend who she applied with. They took my course. They sat down together. They did their applications. They went through the process. And her friend did not get, they both want to go to Columbia. Her friend did not get into Columbia. And her friend now is not returning her phone calls. Additionally, she finally got, so her friend wasn't returning phone calls for a couple weeks. She finally gets her friend on the phone and her friend says, if you were really my friend, you would come to UC blank with me instead of going to Columbia because we said we were in this together. And I was like, no, 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 no. What are we talking about here? And she said, I'm very, I'm very torn. I'm very heartbroken. And, you know, I just, I think she's right. Like if I really care about her, I'll go. And I'm like. Be careful because she's excommunicated from our from our from our group. You could be cut off too if you go to a UC instead of going to your dream school. And what's crazy about that, right? That sounds far out. But how many of you guys have people in your lives like that who hate on your greatness? Who will smile, but they give you that, oh, oh, you that's great. You're doing that again. Oh, you got an award, another one? <laughs> oh, you're not going to have room on your shelf for all your awards. <laughs> How many times that hate of greatness because they don't feel like they can be great. 
And for a lot of you guys, sometimes when I say this in videos about how you guys can be great, you hate to hear it because you don't believe you can be great. You don't even believe it. It's not even in your realm of belief that you can be great. You, you're not even there yet. And then for those of you who know you could be great, you don't like to hear me telling you you can be great if you do these things because you're not willing to give up those things to get that greatness. And it stings and it hurts. What are you willing to give up to get great? I work with students individually and I love it and I hate it. And I love it because there's so many students out there who are working so hard and overcoming so much to be great and are giving everything of themselves to get great. And at the same time, I'm saddled with students who aren't willing to give up a plug nickel to get great, who can't be freaking bothered to fill out my questionnaire to get great. They spend the time on my application to get my coaching and they put all these words in. And then after I accept it for coaching, they spend five minutes filling out the more important form that helps me help them because they can't be bothered. I have students who I'll work with who we do this entire session, right? They pay me for an hour. We'll do a three-hour session. At the end of that three-hour session, I'll send them the recording of the thing and they want typed out notes of the session because they're too flippin' lazy to take their ass onto the video and watch exactly what I broke down to them for three hours to execute and get to medical school. Because they're not willing to give up anything to get great. Because they're lazy. Because they're lazy, they're entitled, and they feel like I owe them everything and they shouldn't have to work. And it irritates me and annoys me, but I can't really blame the individual people because the society we live in of Instagram and lotto winners where everybody thinks, oh, I can just get great. I'm just going to get great. It's not facts. It's not real. So you have to decide right now. Only you, right? It's like Smokey the Bear. Only you can prevent forest fires. Only you can make yourself great. But it's about simple choices of what you're willing to give up to get that greatness. I have courses, they work, but they don't work for everybody because not everybody is willing to give up what they need to give up to get great. It's that simple. My $9 course opens up your mind to the possibility of, oh wow, you can get great, but you've got to do things differently. If you're not willing to give up, you will never get great because True, lasting greatness and success, like getting to medical school, like becoming a doctor, requires tremendous sacrifice. You guys can hear me now. I'm stuffed up. I've been sick for like two months. I can't shake it because I don't sleep, because I'm working with you guys, because I'm working in the hospital. That's what it takes to live the life you want to live. Some of you guys, I, like I said, can't be bothered. And I encourage you. To recognize that life's a simple equation. Sacrifice, consistency, struggle gets you greatness. That simple. Sacrifice, struggle, consistency, greatness. Sacrifice, struggle, consistency, greatness. But you guys get wrapped up in your own bubbles and your own center of the universe and you want to envy people and hate on people and you guys want to play down on yourselves and say that you can't be great. Oh, well, they're great because of this. And you want to blame external factors. They're great because they put in the work, because they gave up to get great. But some of you guys can't fathom that. So it's easier to assign, oh, it's because they got money. Oh, it's because they had that tutor. Oh, it's because they, whatever you want to blame it on, they're naturally smart, whatever it might be. The problem is, is you haven't taken your dumb ass to the library enough. You haven't taken your dumb ass, right, to the bookstore enough. Your dumb ass don't go to office hours. The person getting the A is going to office hours. It boggles my mind. Office hours are your opportunity to sit down with a teacher and literally ask them what's on the test. And you guys don't go because you can't be bothered. Oh, you know, I don't have any classes that late. It's a 7 o'clock on a Friday. Ooh, I can't. Uh, my Friday evening, I got to get loose down at In Cahoots. I'm getting loose at In Cahoots. But you can't go to office hours. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. That's your decision. If you're dumb in 2018, it's because you've decided to be dumb. That's real. I have never been any more naturally talented than any of you guys. Yet, people call me smart because I've given up tremendous amounts of my free time to learn things. To learn things. I've made that an actual to-do list on my to-do items every single day is to learn something, to get smarter. And all that smart, all those little sessions of five pages, ten pages, a ten-minute lecture, adds up to tremendous amounts of knowledge that then make you smart. That is the truth. But so many of you guys aren't willing to do that. And so many of you guys don't recognize how good you have it. And it's all relative because we all struggle. But there are students out there who are overcoming stuff you couldn't imagine and having success. And it makes me wonder, again, what is your excuse? Why are you stopping yourself from being successful? And to bring this all back into circle, I had a call with a student who I affectionately like is is one of like I all my students are one of my favorite students, but this is literally one of my favorite students because what she goes through. And right now, she is studying for her MCAT. She's working full time to support her disabled parents and her younger sister. So she's working full time. She doesn't have a car. She commutes to work, right? She has to take public transportation to that work. She works full time. Not to support herself, not to buy kicks, but to support her disabled parents. All the while, she's still managing to put in four hours of MCAT studying a day. Sleeping only a few hours every night. And she's been doing this for four months. Getting it done, leading up to her MCAT in a couple months. And it's stuff like that, if you were to look at her resume, it would look like the resume of someone who was ultra-privileged, You're like, how could you do all these activities? How could you have such an impact? How could your grades be so amazing? How could all these things happen? Yet she carries more of a load than almost anyone I've ever met. And it's all a matter of she said, I'm willing to give up all this stuff to get great. I'm willing to give up the sleep. I'm willing to give up the friend time. She doesn't hang out with her friends. She is giving all this up. She has all this weight on her and I could it, it pained me it almost made me cry in the session with her because you ever had a conversation with someone and, and you knew the weight of the world was crushing them? Anybody ever have one of those conversations? Ever anyone ever feel that in themselves? Like you just felt like in that moment the entire world was on your shoulders and you couldn't carry the load? Who's ever felt that way? Or had a conversation and you could hear it in somebody's voice You could see it in their body language that they were defeated. They were beat. That all the responsibility they had was too much for one person to carry. Has anybody ever experienced that? David said, I felt both. Recently. Roberto said, yep. You guys, I know it feels like the weight is going to crush you. But we're incredibly strong people who can do incredible things. The impossible becomes possible. Don't feel like the weight you have is too much. Rise up, be strong, and give to get great. Carry that load, carry that weight. If you are that person right now, and Adam said, I felt that way, but not nearly as justifiably as her. And Adam, it's all relative. And I had to explain this to someone on YouTube the other day who criticized one of the videos I did about a student's hardships. And they said, oh, I don't respect that because I was homeless. And And I said, everyone has their own struggle. Everyone has their own weights. Everybody, Nobody's life is perfect. I carry weight every day. Everybody carries weight. It's all a matter of if you're able to carry your weight. And you can feel weighed down by it, but you've got to keep going. 
You've got to use it as fuel, as motivation, and recognize that there are people out there like like this girl who's doing all this stuff. Like you said, if you're not doing all that stuff, be like, okay, if she can do it, I can do it. There are people with no arms and no legs who are authors, professional speakers who do all this. I saw this thing the other day. This guy is a professional archer. He has no arms. Like he, he uses a bow and arrow with his feet. So my point is, is there are tons of people in this world who overcome tremendous amounts. Whatever your burden is, whatever your hardship is, you can turn it into greatness, but you've got to be willing to give to get that greatness. It's like we said in the previous video. If you're behind, you got to run faster to catch up. That's what it is. Does that make sense to everybody? You've got to be willing to give to get great. That's the reality. There is no instant success. There is nothing you can't overcome, but you've got to go get it. And it starts with believing that you can be great and then understanding that greatness comes from giving of yourself to get it. Like, that's, it, it, it's all it is. That's everything. You don't need money. You don't need resources. You don't need natural ability. You don't need anything other than your willingness to give your entire all, to give your life up to get great. And to willing, be willing to be hated and ostracized and called crazy because you're willing to be real about what really matters and prioritize yourself. And this is something also, as we're going to get to a side topic here, is selfishness. It's like the friend story. It, you're selfish if you go to your dream school and you don't hang out with me. It's not selfish, guys, to put yourself in a position for greatness. Because through that greatness, that's how you give yourself to other people. If I was not a physician, you guys wouldn't listen to me. If I didn't put in thousands of hours into studying, you guys wouldn't gain from my study strategies. If I didn't talk to all the people I talked to in admissions and break it down and analyze admissions, you guys wouldn't gain or listen to me for admissions. I wouldn't be able to help you unless I helped myself get into medical school and be ready and go to these things. But people want to call you selfish when you're trying to better yourself, when you're trying to do things and, and trying to go and, and make a change in yourself. People trip off that. And this is totally off topic, on topic, but I saw a meme that was kind of funny last night was in the operating room. But it was this meme, and you guys know that the Kermit the Frog meme where it's like Kermit Frog says one thing, like it's a positive thing, and then the, the bottom it says something negative, he's got the hoodie on, right? And the top said, oh, my man is trying to get, uh, is trying to lose weight to get healthy and fit and live a long life. And the bottom one was, oh, he's trying to get sexy for some ladies, right? <laughs> like, it's that level of, excuse me, <coughs> it's that level of mind games that we play like with each other and other people will play with your success is like, oh, oh, you're trying to study all hard all night. You're trying to beat me on the test. I'm not trying to beat you. I'm trying to beat my own record. I'm trying to beat myself. I'm trying to get great. I'm trying to be my own greatest. I'm not competing with you. I, I don't compete with anybody. I compete with myself to be my best. And I know if I'm my best, I'm better than anybody else because nobody else is setting that standard and no one else is giving up what I'm giving up to get my greatness. But it's not about them. It's about me. Does that make sense? Ulysses said, I'm ready. I'm ready to give up everything to become great. I am ready. As you said, I'm behind, unfortunately. And it's all right. I was behind. Everyone's behind somebody. But are you willing to give up what's required for you to get ahead? Sharisa said, that's true. No excuses, just dominate. It's, it, that's why I say that. No excuses, just dominate. No matter whatever's in your way, it does not matter. Just dominate. Kick through the door. I don't really care. You cannot not dominate. There's no reason not to. Right? So Roberto said, in the girl case, that's not a true friendship, as you mentioned in one of your videos. It's not true friendship. Right? We've talked about this. Can't handle your greatness. So David, the girl has not made her decision yet. But I'm kicking her in her butt to go get her to go to Columbia. This is all just happening. This is all this week, right? So all these stories. So you guys see, talk about carrying weight. Like all the pre-med I talked to in a week, it's like all your guys' stuff sits in my brain and I have to stay up at night. I couldn't even sleep after I talked to her. 
about like the struggle she's going through right now in her MCAT studying the other girl, I couldn't even sleep that night. I was like sitting there and I'm like kicking it. My wife's getting mad at me because I'm like, I can't sit still because it, it weighs on me because I feel like, man, everyone should be able to be great. Everyone should have the support in their lives. Oh man, everyone shouldn't have to take care of their parents. Everyone shouldn't have to, to deal with that. Everyone shouldn't have to, right? I wish that everyone didn't have to deal with everything. I can't take away all the hardship you guys face. I can't. But what I can do is be here to support you guys and I can try to give you guys all my knowledge. That's what I'm capable of doing. So if you guys read in the description, then I'm going to give you guys a coupon code that you can use for this weekend only, today and tomorrow, to get 20% off my courses, 20% off all the courses. This is that moment where I'm giving you that code. And that code is greatness. Great and then this. Greatness. If you enter that code, you guys get 20% off all my courses. That way you guys can have the strategies you need to get great, to help you guys overcome whatever is weighing on you to get great. That's all I can do is encourage you guys and give you guys information. I can't do the work for you. I can't all of a sudden give you a thousand dollars for your parents to be okay, but I can do this for you guys. So 20% off this entire weekend, today and tomorrow, all my courses with the code greatness. Does that make sense? So Reagan said, what's up, Dr. P? I want to apply your strategy to help me get into CRNA. Is that okay? That's absolutely okay. So I work with dental students, pre-dental, CRNA, nursing school. I work with students of everything because sound strategies, as with anything, right? Being nice to people, that's a sound strategy. It works in all scenarios. That's what my strategies do for people, what my courses do for people. It's not gimmicks. It's not cheesy stuff. You have to work for it. If you have to work at what I teach you, but if you work at it, if you give up, if you sacrifice, if you go, you're going to be so great, greater than you ever imagined. That's the truth of it, guys. I don't promise anybody anything. I'm not like, oh, yeah, you're going to be the, the best ever. It only works if you work it. It only works if you work it. But this is not gimmicky stuff. This is stuff that will change your life, guys, in all facets. It's not a drill. It's not a joke. It's not an exaggeration. It's just real. It's just reality. If you guys want to get great, get in a course. More than getting in a course, decide right now to give up everything to get great. Because all my courses in the world won't help you if you don't make that decision to say, listen, I'm going to do whatever is required for me to get great. Does that make sense? Ulysses asks, how do I come about becoming your student? So my GPA squad is on hold right now. In March, I'm going to make an announcement. New and improved enrollment open for the GPA squad so you guys can be mentored by me. There's going to be a lot of advantages of that, including access to me. But in March, because I want to make sure that I'm fully able to support all you guys without bringing you guys in, okay? But I, I can't tell you guys enough. Please stop calling people gunners or crazy because they want to be great. Stop letting other people convince you you're crazy or you're out of your mind because you believe you can be great and you're willing to put the work in to get that greatness. Don't let people defeat you. Don't defeat yourselves. And whatever load you guys are carrying, pick that, pick it up. Don't drop that, pick it up and keep going. Step by step, right? Brick by brick, day by day, whatever you're doing, get it done. If you're carrying the whole weight of your family, you carry that. Pick them up and you walk with them. Maybe it's a slower progress than other people, but you walk with it. It doesn't break you. You walk with it. And one of my favorite movies is Men of Honor. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this movie. Roberto said, you're surprised in your Gmail, so you should be able to air it today. All right, I'm excited about that. Thank you, Roberto. Uh, Sharissa said, your dominant MCAT course actually condensed the information that helps and works. I appreciate that. But if you guys have ever seen Men of Honor, I love the movie because it's Cuba Gooding Jr., Robert De Niro. And Cuba Gooding Jr. wants to be the first black naval officer ever. And everybody in their in the movie, including Robert De Niro, are trying to do their best to hold him down. 
They're trying to do their best to keep him from achieving his dreams. And he's got the whole weight of everything on him. And I thought it was a great scene in the movie that encapsulated, I don't know if everybody got this, but the metaphor, at the end of the movie, he loses his leg. And they're still trying to keep him out of being in the Navy. And he still wants to be that Navy officer. So he's willing to do it one leg, tells him to chop his leg off. And so they make him walk in this like 300 pound suit on this artificial leg. And so he basically has to hop on one leg. And the scene is him. He has to even get up out of the chair with this, with this rig. He has to lift it up and he has to carry it the steps. And I thought it was a tremendous metaphor for his struggle to become that naval officer of he, everything is weighing down on him. Everything is on him. But his determination, his grit in the movie, he's sweating and he's crying as he takes these steps. Every step, boom, boom, and he's going down, but he doesn't stop. He keeps carrying that weight. And for some of you guys, right, it doesn't matter if you're sweating, if you're crying, if you're bleeding. Keep moving the weight. Just keep moving. No matter what, it doesn't matter if you're if you're all bloody, if you're sweating, if you're crying when you get there, it doesn't matter. Did you get there? Did you get there? Because I promise you, through all that, you're going to, when it seems the bleakest, when it seems the heaviest, when it seems like no more steps can be taken, I promise you, you can keep going and you can get there. And you can keep, ah, ah, and you can shoulder that weight. And as someone who's been there, who knows what it is to feel like, man, I don't have the requisite skills to get ready to go. As you guys should know by now, I'm an awful slow reader. It's not a drill. They would fire me. I couldn't even be like a kindergarten class reader of like Dr. Seuss books. I read horribly slow. It's like mental disability type level slow. Slow, slow, slow. My wife has to read my text because she can't wait for me to be done reading it. She like hates it. But despite that slowness of reading, despite that, I still triumph. And I triumph because I was willing to give up hours and time and all this stuff to figure out ways to work around my slow reading. The ways to overcome that and to carry that slow reading with me and still get it done. And I encourage you guys, don't let whatever your handicap or disadvantage is stop you from getting to your greatness, right? And David said, pursuit of happiness, Will Smith is one of my biggest inspirations to make it in life no matter what situation. That's so true, Dave, right? He was in the bathroom holding the door. That's a great scene, right? He's holding the door, crying, holding this kid. But that's the reality. That's the truth. That's life, guys. Like the pursuit of happiness is life. Everyone sees like, oh, yeah, this guy's a big exec. Everyone sees Will Smith. Oh, he's this great actor. Guys, all that stuff is freaking struggle and triumph and being willing to go out on a limb and work for free. He was working for free with a kid to get that greatness. He was willing to give up and risk everything and sleep in a bathroom and sleep on a subway and do all these things in a shelter to work that job to get great. Yet some of you guys can't be inconvenienced to go back to campus for an office hour. Can't be inconvenienced to travel for an event. Can't be, uh, oh, can't be inconvenienced. But that's the people who are giving up to get, to get great. That's, that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. And I'll end this stream and we can be done for today. But what are you willing to give up to get your greatness, guys? Ask you sit down today and really think about that real hard and ask yourself, have I been giving up what's required to get great? Am I on track to be Tom Brady? Is that my trajectory or am I on track to be Blake Bortles? What am I willing to give up to get great? Think about it. You guys all have a great weekend. Uh, if you're coming out to see me today at UCSD, I appreciate you. I'll see you guys out there. If you're coming out to see me on Tuesday at UC Irvine for our High Dominant Midterms workshop, 
I'll, I'll see you guys there on Tuesday. We'll have a good time. If you haven't already, please register for that event at UC Irvine. It's absolutely free, guys. It's about greatness and delivering it to you guys. Okay, so Brandy, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Ulysses, God bless you too. Everyone, God bless everybody, man. And and my man, Freddie, if you guys didn't see on my personal page, I'll share it to my to the uh, pre-med productivity page. But Freddie is a wonderful student who has overcome tremendous disadvantage and just got into his top dental school yesterday and posted an amazing video about that moment. And so I'll, I'll share that to, to my uh, pre-med productivity page so you guys can see that. But it's... It's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah, and thank you, Roberto. Yes, I will have good luck today. And Zach, so how do we get the live stream for the MMI? So I'll be doing the live stream for the MMI partially uh, uh, on, on this Facebook page, possibly, or maybe on, I mean, I'll do it here. I'll do it partially. So I'll do some live streaming from the MMI workshop today on my Facebook page. So you guys can check that out. Uh, yes. All right, so have a great day, guys. God bless you guys. Everyone have a great weekend. And like I said, take advantage of that coupon code, 20% off um, greatness, okay? And go get yourself some greatness this weekend and get to work, guys. Stop messing around. Stop settling. Stop being average. Stop holding yourself back. Stop letting other people hold you back. And just go take that. Take it, right? Just take it. Like, be angry. Be, be angry. Mate. Let it fire you up for your journey. I'm angry every day because I'm hungry for freaking greatness, have that hunger in you guys, all right? So I'm going to get home now. I've been up for too many hours. I need to get at least like a couple hours of sleep before I go do that workshop today. But I encourage you guys, get great, okay? Get great. Have a great day, guys.